I didn't expect this. And the picture on the card is a picture of myself and my mother, which I certainly was not expecting. My mother passed about three years ago. But she, was, she always supported me, and she came to all the events that the Fair Housing had. And so I guess it's appropriate that she should give a picture. Um, thank you. My daughter, my daughter Kelly, they wanted they missed on the program. <laughs> <laughs> I know the favorite. <laughs> uh, she is my favorite daughter. <laughs> this is my favorite son. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Margaret. Um, I just want to, well, oh, come on. One thing my mother had shared with me, uh, probably when I was in her womb, was the importance of service in the world. So, we got her these flowers, and on the base it says, Life's most persistent and urgent question is, What are you doing for others? I really wasn't going to say anything except thank you, but then I thought I should say a few words. <laughs> Again, thank you, Margaret, for the wonderful. And I want to thank the board and staff for making this award possible. I also want to thank my children who have made this a big event. <laughs> and my family, many of whom are here, as well as my bas part of my basketball team. Would you all stand just say hello to everybody? All of you. Everybody. Legally sanctioned racial segregation in housing may be over, wrote Justice Kennedy. But its vestiges remain today intertwined with the country's economic and social life. It's a recent case, a recent part of a recent uh, opinion of a case that, that upheld a long-standing principle that the law, that in the law, the allegations of discrimination, you don't have to show intent because many things are just the way they happen, you know, because discrimination is not always out there. Sometimes it's very subtle, and most of the people in this room know that. Between 1934 and 1968, redlining by the Federal Housing Administration made it virtually impossible for black persons to secure housing, the effects of which still, still are visible in our communities. My father couldn't obtain a house. I remember we're trying to get a house. We lived in the, in the Brewster Projects and we couldn't get a house. We had to buy a house from a relative because we could not get, we could not get any finance. We know that where you live and the type of housing you have will dictate the schools your children go to, the jobs that are available to you, the quality of food that you can purchase, how mentally and physically healthy you are and many other aspects of living and life. We know that housing plays a direct role in the accumulation of wealth. And discrimination in housing has continued to broaden the wealth gap between the races. Continued and will continue if we don't stop it. These facts may be obvious to those of you who occupy this room. Most of you know this. But there are still many people who don't and don't understand how we got to where we are. We know that there's still covert and at times overt actions of discrimination that continue to plague our communities. We at the Fair Housing Center have said many times that our purpose was to put ourselves out of business. <laughs> but housing discrimination is eliminated in Detroit and the metropolitan area where we have a business. I was trying to hold on for <laughs> but it's pretty obvious. It's not going to happen too soon. And I think 30 years is probably let some new blood in to fight the fight. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is all our responsibility to speak up and speak out about housing and all types of discrimination that threaten to upend our communities. And of course, support the Fair Housing Center so that it can continue its work the great work it's been doing, exposing discrimination, 
exposing the discrimination that still exists in our community today. This award signifies over 30 years of my association with the Fair Housing Center, for which I am extremely proud. Thank you.